we have no choice but to follow what God has built in the life of Kuya. I would like to read a passage in the New Testament where Paul corrected many of the misconceptions about death. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, starting from verse 13, we read, Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed for people. About those who speak in death, so you do not grieve like the rest of mankind, who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died, rose again, and so we believe that God will bring Jesus, with Jesus, those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not receive those who have fallen. For the Lord Himself will come down from heaven and with a loud command with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God, the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left, we be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another Two things that Paul taught the Thessalonians about them. First, the misconception, the wrong ideas about death. And I would, and as we listen to these points that the Apostle Paul will bring out, you'll find that it's really Filipino. Many of the things he said is what we Filipinos are doing. <coughs> First, of the misconceptions and perceptions of death is <coughs> the topic. The topic of death is the book. Wag nyo pag uusapan. Hey, wag kang maingay dyan. It's what the old people always say when the topic of death is being brought out. Bawal pag-usapan ang kamatayan. Bakit? Why is it? Because many thought that if you talk about death, you are inviting death to come and you might die prematurely. So what happened? Many of those who are not prepared, those who are ignorant, uneducated, do not bother to think about death, are left in panic, desperation, and left at the mercy of funeral partners and those who work with death and their death. Sign na lang ng sign. Pagdating ng bill. So if your heart is weak, then you'll be the next to be David. There are many things that are we could see in, in, in death. My brother last, my brother, younger brother next to me died last November. When we heard that he will be transferred to the hospice, I was happy. But I thought he would be taken care of. I didn't realize until I, I asked my sister who was there, what does it mean? Are we beginning a countdown? And she said, yes. No medicine, no nothing except a drop of morphine will be fed him. He will be just left until he 
where this he made his last breath. Many misconceptions. Second, death is the beginning of everything. Paul said, I don't want to be you to be uninformed about those who sleep. Uh, for Paul, that is a simple nap, not even a, a deep sleep. Because we don't know when he will the possibility of waking up. Most often people who hear about the death of a loved one, a friend, would say, Wala na. And so that's the reason why people, many Filipinos, would always take effort and time to attend at least one lamai, and he can, he will walk the last mile with the loved one until his burial ground. Lamai limping is a practice because we thought it's the end of everything. Paul used the word sleep for, uh, for death because it is only a temporary thing. Kung nakutulog, magiging sila. Di ba? At patay, wala na. So, ano yung sleeping? It looks better than when we took him from the hospital. No? When he was brought out of the morgue, I just simply made a wide angle look, but I didn't want to register because I don't want what I saw to be dangerous. When he came here, the first thing I said, wow, okay, mayon. Yeah, it looks better than what I said to I Number three, the show of three. Paul said, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind. We, we question, we who know the Lord, we who know what death is, we cry, we grieve, we are sorrowful, and that's natural, but not so excessive like many other people. One time, while I was pastor, a, 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 a mother, the mother of one member was brought home to the ancestral uh, town in Pampanga. We were so tired and slept early in the travel and the many arrangements that we had to do. We were awakened when somebody shouted and wailed and made a low, a, a big dramatic Literally, the whole town could be awakened. I didn't want. I don't want to be awakened in my big sleep. In the morning, I asked them, this son, person, uh, who's that? Oh, that's the youngest sister of my mom. Then the Tagalog I told him, may sabit ba siya? Then, mommy, that's she have any uh, issue, issue, problem. Is there an issue? And then he said, yes. Of all the sisters, she is the worst. No wonder. She has to make all that effort, maybe to ask forgiveness, to reconcile, but what good is it? When you only talk to somebody when he's dead, when he cannot hear and cannot even understand what you're saying. It's useless. So be careful how you behave here. Especially when we bring Alan to his uh, resting quarters. Okay? Maybe you will be observing and you will be recording by taking videos and uh, number three number four why does people so 
grammatic in in coming to wake and data is because of their uncertainty in their destination, final destination and destiny. Who have no hope? That's what Paul said. Kawawa. Okay, pitiful if you know you are if you are a hopeless case. The real reason for excessive grief is because people do not know where they go. I made it always a point when I was still a Bible school student, when I was pastor, every time there is a funeral, I would ask people who were around if you were if you were in that coffin, you know where you're going? 98% of people, I don't know. Only God knows. Yeah, God knows. But if you don't know, you are very, very unfortunate. Let us show grief. And a lot of people have different ways, depending on their personality, their impact, the impact of the uh, of the death, the kind of understanding they have will be how you will react to them. It's all right to show grief. It's even better if you don't. That's normal. If there is no reason for you to try to wail on funeral, why be artificial about it? I love my father. He died in the United States where none of us would go. You know, it took me 24 years before I shed my first tear to my dad. Why? There was no reason for me to cry. In fact, when he died, I always remember what he did for me how I became what I am because of his persistent training, teaching, admonition, and even unwarranted suggestions. 24 years. My mom died. A few minutes, I cried. I was there on her deathbed. My younger brother died last of all. It only took three days, knowing that he died, that I shed my tears. Timing is important and therapeutic. You don't have to if you don't feel it, but if you feel it, do it the best you can. Because life, our emotion should not be kept. Because it develops a pressure within and it will be very explosive if you keep it longer than necessary. But there is always also a terminal point in the My youngest daughter, my favorite among the three, died when she was only six years old. And a half. I cried for the first hundred years. Uh, Hundred days. <laughs> I wake up in the middle of night. And often I ask God, why? Why my people? And one day, this thought just came into my mind. God owes you no explanation. Let God allow God to be silent when He wants to be silent. And I'm answering your pestering why, which is often the most asked question during funerals and during death of God. But Bakit? Answer the Lord, ask God. That's the best answer. I don't know. Do you know? Anybody know why Alan died so suddenly at a young age? Hindi pa tapos ang maraming mga dreams niya para sa siya, para sa pamilya, 
ba sa mga anak niya? Bakit? I don't know. If you know, please, maybe it can help with anyone. If you know the answer to that question. But if you don't know where you're going, and though you don't know what will happen, you don't know where Alan is right now, you better grieve and cry and wail, not because of Alan, because of your kakawa-kawa na condition, your pitiful condition because of your ignorance where he is. You cry because you don't know where he is, but those who know where he is right now can cry, but not really be affected. I know where Alan is now, and I know where to find him. Let's go be patient with me. I'll be patient. Okay. So all of these four things, okay, are the misconceptions and are wrong perceptions about them. But one thing good about Paul, he tells you what is wrong and he teach you what is right. From ignorance, you become expert in death matters. So that the next time you will have death in your family, in your fellowship, in your organization, you will behave better and do much better than what we have done today. Yeah? From ignorance to experts, thus you will be more ready and purposive in what you will be doing when that thing happens. Next time, make it different. Make it better. I was amazed as I looked at this event. Since Alan left us, I went, I was in Thailand. You know, I was so surprised. The many people who have been there, I have never seen the, a dynamic such as good as what people at AIP, specifically AIP Christian Fellowship, the dynamics of being there with Lila, Aiden, and uh, Handel. I could not see it in other churches that I have been in my life. I am proud. I salute Parti naman ako ng Stephen for 10 years. Okay? So let's do better. What are the things? If there are wrong things, there should be good, right, and better things to do when that comes along. First, Let me put in first a commercial. If it will be my turn, please don't buy flowers. Flowers will not be accepted. And that I thought. No flowers. Instead of spending flowers, I want you to put that into an over, which is my new name, over memorial mission fund. I'd like to raise money during my funeral to be able to support three families who will be sent out to foreign missions. Food. They don't need to solicit. Okay, that's my goal when I die. Amen. Pero kayo ang magpupulit. Okay? Let's remember. I might come back to remind you of <laughs> I don't know if Peter will allow me, but if he will, I'm going to pick your pocket. Okay? So what are the right things for us to know and do when that comes? First, let's remember, and this is always the foundation of everything we believe and what how we believe. Paul said, for we believe that Jesus died and rose again. 
Jesus first defeated death. So we should never be afraid of death any longer. Yes, Jesus died, but he was only. The tomb was only able to hold him for three days, no more. <coughs> okay? That's why we should not bring him in sad. Because Alan left. You know, you know how Alan works? He will always do his best. And he fulfilled what God has planned for him in 55 years. I'm 71. God is not finished with me yet. I don't know. Okay. But Alan fulfilled his destiny. I have finished the race. 55 years now. Ako, 71 ang tumatakbo. Hindi pa rin. And I don't see. I don't foresee any, any, any day yet. But there are many people who want me to live longer. But even I asked my doctor, is it possible that I can be a centenarian? I almost died last year at 70. One month before my 71st birthday. Now I'm trying to live another 29 years. I know at least two people who are really bent on. You know why I like it? Because when I read if you reach 100 years old, the government will give you 100,000. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. At least I have something no, to give to my grandson. Hindi sa mga anak, sa kay Okay? Alan is enjoying life. Jesus is the living proof that death is only temporary. That is not the ultimate condition. Life is. And Alan knows what it means to have everlasting life. This is what I mean right now. Second, Jesus is coming again. I have a granddaughter, Kaina Ana. His name, her name is Jaita. So I asked the Lord, what does Jaika mean? Oh, it's a reminder for us. Jesus is coming again. That's what it means. So it's a warning for them to better behave and set up their priorities, value system in order, because Jesus is coming. That would shake us. Because Jesus is coming, not as a savior anymore, but as a judge. Okay? Those who marginalize Jesus cannot do so when Jesus comes back. While now, he can smile and patiently wait for you when he comes. All the waiting, all the goody goodies will be done. He will prove with an iron fist and depends on your record, you will not get what you deserve. Just as God resurrected Jesus, those who made Jesus their boss will also be resurrected and Alan is one among them. In the return of Jesus, all those who fall under his lordship, he will bring as a part of his endurance. They went to heaven in their spirit, but they will come back and find their body. Uh, you know, some people make a problem their own when actually it is God. My brother was cremated, and all of us in my family, 
me and my wife, we bought just one lot. Because all of us can fit that then in that one single lot, if we are all in it. Same thing, you know? Or even the coffee, the sugar, the snacks, put that in mission plan. I'd rather have you put something in the mission plan than enjoy coffee in some places in the Philippines, free lunch, breakfast, dinner, snacks, when they're busy. Oh, all that naman yun. I'd rather give that money to the show. Okay? But how do, how do we reconstruct or reconstitute the action? I don't know. In AIP, we have one student from China who drowned in Pattaya. We cremated her and the husband uh, put the ashes, threw the ashes back to the beach where she was. And she was really, he was really crying. The husband is a security officer in here. And one of the things he said, when the, the last letter of the wife said, can you please allow me to believe in Jesus? When he told that to our leadership in AI Christian Fellowship, what did you what did you answer her? He said, sure. I'm even curious why she would believe on this Jesus. And the husband became a Christian and now he's a pastor of I don't know how many members that he had. When the boat we were riding to to throw away the, the ashes in the sea, I asked Stanley, our elder, who is a Chinese, what is he shouting? Why is he shouting that man? And Stanley said, God. Everywhere the ashes of my wife would reach to make the gospel reach those places. A good Christian, barely two weeks old Christian, can have that kind of perception on evangelism and world mission. And when the whole turn, the last ash was thrown. Unfortunately, the wind direction returned back, and I paid some. <laughs> I had no choice. My mouth was open, it came in. It's like kinetic drums. No? So, I have. What do you of your yes, uh, what? Uh, I had some of her assets. I don't know where those assets. It came in, it went out when, I don't know where, I don't know. But God said, if Jesus will come back, he'll break, he'll let all those who died go back to where their body was. Mahaba-habang trabaho sa gawag din ang Diyos. Sa asawa ni Leon. But I hate it. I don't know where it is. But why should I worry? Why worry about cremation and other things? People who died and, yeah, and their boat sunk in the sea and was eaten by the shark and the shark was eaten by the whale and the whale was eaten by the Japanese and uh, so on and so forth. How would that be reconstituted? I don't know. It's not my problem. It's God's problem. But when Jesus said, go back to your body, just as He made our bodies from a lump of soil, He will be able to bring back all the cells of the body of those who die. Okay. 
do. He has no big problem in Alan. He just come back. Alan will just come back. Put his vernal garden. That's easy. Okay? Jesus is coming again. Number three. And because Jesus is coming again, the real eternity will be in him. There is no more time for eternity in him. No more clock needed. No more watches needed. Number three, first resurrection. Only the dead followers of Jesus will rise again. Okay. That's when Alan will go back to where he will bury him for my life. Those in the rats will go where they were buried or where they died and claim back their bodies. They will change into eternal bodies. Bodies that will not decay and will survive and live where God lives without any space to their identity will be intact. They will be recognized by face and by name. You will not miss Alan. Number four, it will be a grand funeral. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. Wow. Heavenly <laughs> reunion. Atmospheric reunion. How would that happen? Again, this is a day of miracles and don't worry because this is God's worry, not us. Let us enjoy the reunion. Those who are alive during the second coming, that's why my prayer, you know, when I reach 60, I said, I finished my race, I finished my, my task here on earth. God wanted me to be a missionary. I retired as a missionary. I did my job. 18 years, uh, 16 years in the mission field with only 18 months salary check. I was able to build a house when I come back. I was able to send all my children to school. I was, and now I was, I can still, I still survive even though my pension is only 40% of my effective That's how God can do things. We who are alive will be what? Transformed.